Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we've got a simple benchmark video designed to answer one question. Do third gen Ryzen processors perform better in games with a Radeon GPU? We've received quite a few requests to look into this, so I've picked eight of the worst examples for Ryzen and then retested those titles with the Radeon 7. The reason quite a few people have requested this test is because it was discovered that GeForce GPUs were causing problems for first gen Ryzen processors in a few games. So it seems like there's some concern that this might be a problem again. Personally, I'm not really expecting to find anything as Nvidia addressed their driver issue some time ago, but what the hell, we'll take a quick look just to make sure. For the testing, I've used the Radeon 7 as it's still the fastest GPU AMD has produced to date. But since it is quite a bit slower than the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, I've introduced some 720p results as well to complement the standard 1080p CPU testing. I'm also going to skip over the stock CPU test results for this one, instead just focus on the overclocked configurations, which sees both the 9900K and 3900X using the Corsair H115i Pro. The 9900K has been clocked to 5GHz, while the 3900X has PBO Plus Auto OSIG enabled, and both are using DDR4 3200CL14 memory. Okay, let's check out the results. First up we have Far Cry New Dawn, and even with a Radeon GPU, this still looks to be a bad time for the Ryzen processor. Here it was 14% slower at 1080p, and we'll compare the margins seen here when testing with the Radeon 7 to those previously recorded with the RTX 2080 Ti in a moment. For now let's quickly check out the other 7 games tested. The 3900X still trails the 9900K in Hitman. At 1080p, it was just 5% slower, but we are GPU limited here, and as a result, the margin grew to 13% at 720p. This time, when testing with Just Cause 4, we're again GPU limited at 1080p, but even at 720p, the 3900X was just 6% slower. So, not a massive difference here, but the 3900X does still trail the 9900K, even with a Radeon GPU. Like Far Cry New Dawn, Kingdom Come Deliverance is another bad title for AMD, though the 1% low performance did match that of the 9900K. Still, the 3900X was around 10% slower when looking at the average frame rate. Project Cars 2 is another title where we're GPU limited at 1080p, and as a result, the 3900X was just 7% slower. Lowering the resolution to 720p sees the 3900X trail the 1900K by an 11% margin for the average frame rate, though we do see similar 1% low performance. Out of interest, I threw in the RTX 2080 and fired up Project Cars 2 again, just to see if the margins changed by any meaningful amount. Here we see that at 1080p, the 3900X was 5% slower, and at 720p, it was 11% slower, so almost the exact same margin seen with the Radeon 7. Anyway, we have a few more games to go over with the Radeon 7 GPU, so let's go do that. Here we see when using the Radeon 7 graphics card that it doesn't help the performance in StarCraft 2. Here the 3900X was still 16% slower, and we are heavily CPU limited in this title. And just quickly, for those of you unaware, I should just note that StarCraft 2 only utilizes 1 to 2 cores, and that's a big issue for these big 4v4 battles. The Ryzen 9 3900X does well in Vermintide 2, and was fast enough to max out the Radeon 7 at 1080p. Lowering the resolution to 720p did see the 3900X fall behind the Intel CPU by a 5% margin, but overall a very little difference here. Finally we have Ghost Recon Wildlands, and again the 3900X trailed the 9900K, this time by an 8% margin. So the Radeon 7 GPU wasn't able to get AMD on top here either. Okay, so at this point, it's pretty clear that the Ryzen 9 3900X is still slower than the Core i9 9900K when using a Radeon GPU. Probably not too many surprises there, but that is the situation. I guess the real question is, has the deficit been reduced? So let's move on to find out. From our previous testing with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, we found that in the games tested here, the 3900X was 10% slower on average at 1080p when compared to the 9900K. Again, these were some of the worst results for the Ryzen processor, and for those who missed it, across 36 games tested, the 3900X was just 5% slower on average. Now we see with the Radeon 7 installed that the 3900X is just 8% slower on average at 1080p, so very little change here. 
But remember, for many of these tests, we were quite heavily GPU limited at 1080p. So let's take a look at the 720p results. Well, there you have it, 10% slower on average when using the Radeon 7 at 720p. So the exact same margin seen when using the RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p across the eight game sample. For those of you wondering how the individual game margins compare between the Radeon and GeForce GPUs, here's a quick look at that. Margins in Vermintide 2, Project Cars 2, Hitman 2, and StarCraft 2 were basically all identical. Then we see that the 3900X did better than the GeForce GPU on Kingdom Come Deliverance and Far Cry New Dawn, but worse in Ghost Recon Wildlands. At most we're talking about a 4% difference here for an individual title, but the point is overall using a Radeon GPU didn't change the big picture, it's still 10% slower in the 8 games tested. So there you have it, had AMD delivered a flagship GPU that could rival the RTX 2080 Ti, the battle between the Core i9-9900K and Ryzen 9 3900X would look no different. The AMD processor would still be slightly slower, and the 9900K would enjoy the performance gains it does in the games tested here. It's certainly possible that you'll come across a game that does work better with Ryzen when using a Radeon GPU, but that won't change how these two CPUs compare across a widespread of games. So hopefully we can put that one to rest now. In order for AMD to be able to match Intel's gaming performance, they still need those clock speeds to be boosted up a bit. As it stands, Intel CPUs still enjoy around a 12% frequency advantage. That said, as seen in our IPC testing, cache and DRAM latency is still an issue, and even when matched clock for clock, the lower latency Intel Coffee Lake CPUs still enjoy a slight performance advantage in games. Still, it's not a big advantage, and chances are the vast majority of you will never notice the small performance bump the 1900K offers over the 3900X in games. But what you're almost certainly going to notice is the difference in productivity performance which is why we recommend the 3900X. In the end though, they're both very powerful desktop processors and work just as well with either an AMD or Nvidia GPU installed. And that's gonna do it for this one, a relatively short video, but there's not much more to say on this one, so no need to drag it out any longer. An eight game sample really tells us all we need to know. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and if you wanna support the channel more directly and receive some cool perks, then check out our Patreon page. As always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.